Um, the engine that was in the 2004 model was uh, designed in uh, 18. No, it wasn't. That'd been awesome. <laughs> it was designed in 1994. Uh, uh, eight. The fuck am I talking about? Hi my name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and today I'm doing a video on the back of the two strokes of shit video and uh, basically what I'm going to talk about is this is a comparison between two strokes and four strokes so a lot of people started saying, you know, commented saying oh two strokes this and the other which is fair enough you know I did not say at any point that two strokes were not um, did not have great power to weight ratios and so on and so forth um, but we would I was generally saying that you know that four strokes and replace two strokes and so on and so forth. Um, so I've got written down here just some numbers because I can't remember all this stuff. Um, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to compare uh, two stroke and four stroke. And what I'm going to compare is on the two stroke side of the camp, we are going to look at the Kawasaki KX500. And then on the other side of this, the versus side for the four stroke, we are actually going to use the ER5. So I've got the R5 here that's just generally um, why I'm picking that. I'm going to use this to um, signify a point about two strokes uh, versus four strokes. So what we want to look at first is I've got the numbers written down here. The KX had 65 horsepower and the R5 had about 50 horsepower. Now... <coughs> You'll notice that the KX500 wins, and the reason why I've chosen the KX500, that's other things I have to write, is the KX500 has been around for a long time, but the numbers that I am using are from the KX that was sold in 2004. Uh, the ER5 was sold in 2004, um, up until 2004. So these two bikes basically finished production about the same time. So the, this is the 2004 model for both. Uh, both of these bikes were built in 2004, so it's a good comparison there. Now the KX series um, started in 1984, 1983, something like that. And um, the actual numbers that I got for this KX500 uh, was actually the model that was released in 2004. And that engine was designed in 1998. So if we put design here... That engine was designed in 1998, while the ER5 engine, even though it had ever so slight little upgrades, generally due to emissions and stuff like that, this engine is from the um, GPZ500. Uh, if you look at the GPZ500 compared to the ER5 engine, there is literally nothing different. It's one or two springs and some washers and stuff, but the uh, core plant of the engine is exactly the same. They, they changed the camshaft timing ever so slightly. It was more to do with efficiency and to get the right emissions. So the ER5 was actually taken out of production because it didn't meet the emissions. And the KX500, obviously, that won't meet the um, emissions regulation. It's also worth to note that these are both Kawasaki, so it's a good comparison in that um, point of view. My point is this, is that as a case study... The KX500 was a more up-to-date engine than the ER5. It's a two-stroke. It was taken out of production and replaced by the KX450, which is a four-stroke version. Um, and the ER5 was taken out of production for the simple fact is it also didn't meet the um, European regulations for emissions and what have you. And because Kawasaki have a lot of customers in Europe, they kind of that's the harshest. Um, emissions and that in California there some of the harshest emissions so they have to fall in suit with that if they want to sell that bike worldwide um, so like I said they were both taken out of uh, commission about the same time because of the emissions problem with both the two and the four stroke um, but the, the KX500 is uh, a newer engine a lot newer compared to the ER5 um, so the fact of the matter is or the point that I'm making is people say you know Four strokes have wasted uh, cycles and all the rest of it. There's two, two extra cycles instead of just the two stroke. There's four of them. Um, and I was arguing the toss that they're a lot more efficient and hence they are a better engine. Um, and one other point is, is that 
The two-stroke engine, the two-stroke engine that takes 500 is lighter than the ER5 engine. It's as simple as that. It hasn't got a head, it's got a lot less components. They're both geared bikes. And it's a lighter engine. It, this is a heavier engine. This has two power strokes um, for every one of the four stroke. So surely, if it's a lighter engine and produces twice as many power strokes, then you'd expect a, a lot bigger horsepower uh, measurement than you would say for the R5, surely. This is an older engine as well. This is more than 10 years older in design than this engine. This is one of the best uh, engines that Kawasaki produced. And if you're from, you know, if you're like me, you're from the 80s and the 90s and stuff like that, Kawasaki were pretty much one of the best two-stroke manufacturers. You know, they were winning championships all around the world with their two-stroke motocross bikes and all the rest of it. Um, the KX500 as a bike is lighter than the ER5. Uh, the ER5 is quite a heavy machine, really. So it should produce more horsepower. The lightness, not so much that's unless you do the rolling road, but it's really not taken into consideration too much because you're not ploughing it through air. But the KX500 doesn't really produce that much more horsepower than the ER5. You know, it has double the power strokes compared to the R5, which is a four stroke. Now, the, it's, not an, it's not a direct comparison because this is a twin cylinder and this is a single cylinder. Also, another thing that points out about the two strokes is that making multiple cylinder engines is a lot harder with two strokes than it is four strokes because you have to have crankcases that you can separate and stuff like that with a, a shared crankshaft is more difficult to do. Um, but as as like um, as I'm saying, you know, you would expect twice as many power strokes. It should be, you know, more power than, you know, it's 15 horsepower more. It's like 22% more. It's it's a lot. Don't get me wrong. 22% in the uh, the difference between the two is an awful lot. But it's not fantastic. You know, you've got double the amount of power strokes. So what's going on? Why is uh, this power so low in a sense? You know, I'm not expecting a hundred horsepower, but the engine is lighter. Um, you know, I'd, I'd be, you'd be expecting something more like 80, more like 80 horsepower, something close to that. It's got twice as many power strokes, and this is all to do with the volumetric efficiency of how most of your uh, power stroke goes straight out your exhaust, your fuel goes out your exhaust, some of it comes back in, and all the rest of it. But the efficiency and the compression efficiency of a two-stroke means that these numbers. Ah, uh, you know, this is bigger, this is quite, you know, it's quite a substantial amount bigger, but two strokes are lighter engines, a lot simpler, rev higher, so still, why are we not producing this? And it's because of the volumetric efficiency, and because the volumetric efficiency is low, um, your torque production is low, and you can try and make up for the, as much RPM as you want, you need the torque, because the torque is the force, RPM is just a measure of cycles over time. So if you don't have the force, if you're not making the most of your fuel and air, then it doesn't matter how much you rev it, what well, it does to a certain degree, but you know, the, the rev characteristics between these two aren't that great. The, you know, it's not double the revs. Um, and this is why you don't see this massive increase. So you might be saying, yeah, yeah, this is all good, Matt. You know, this is an older engine and it's not, you know, this is a newer engine and it's still not that much better. Um, you know, you've got to have a better example than this because this is a twin cylinder and this is a single cylinder, which is a good point, which is what we're going to move on to next. So as our example, what we're going to look at is what replaced the KX500. And what replaced the KX500 was the uh, KX450F. And uh, this is still in production right up until now, I'm pretty sure. I know there's a two 2016 model. Um, but this is a four-stroke, so this is our four-stroke and this is our two stroke. So straight away we need to look at um, the power output of these two. So obviously our KX500 had 65 horsepower and our new KX450 has 55 horsepower. Now again you might be thinking well the difference between the two is 18%, it's still higher. So you might be saying yeah for horsepower production the KX500 is still winning, it's still producing more horsepower, and this is data from the 2016 model. You know, so if this is 2004, you know, there's a lot of difference between the two. Um, you know, they've had a lot more time to work on this engine, so to speak, 
but you've also got to remember this is 50cc smaller, which isn't that much in the grand scheme of things. You know, it's a, uh, what is it, a fourth, an eighth. There's an eighth difference, you know what I mean? But there is a difference. This is a smaller engine, this is a larger engine, it's a lighter engine, and it's only doing 10 horsepower better. And obviously you've got to take into consideration the um, emissions and all the rest of it. But what is interesting, and if I just look at my uh, job is, is that this, the, the KX500 engine made, um, oh, fucking hell, I messed that up. Why did I write that? 33 foot-pounds of torque, and the, what's that, 35.7. And this is the difference. This is how, even though the old KX500 engine has twice as many power strokes, which means it uses pretty much twice as much fuel, the engine's a lot lighter, this is a smaller engine, it's a four stroke, it's got half the power strokes compared to the two stroke. It's a smaller engine, but it produces more torque. And